Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, are you sitting here? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, I'll leave. Thanks. <laughs> Monkey. Yo, what up YouTube? KDude here, and welcome back to Vault Tower Defense. So, sorry for the long wait between the last devlog. It's, it's, it's been a while, I know. So now that summer has started, we're gonna be working a lot longer and harder on the game, and if everything goes according to plan, devlogs should be coming out around every two to three weeks. So the game has gotten a ton of new features since the last video. So as you just saw in the lobby, there's a playable band. Um, I'll explain more about it later, but you saw it. So the lobby has turned from, like, not anything to a huge vault where you can recruit troops ready your team or hang out in the saloon to find other people to play with then once you're ready you can set up a match and start playing the gameplay has also been improved a bunch as well now we have modifiers where you can change the difficulty of the game but it also increases the rewards and you can even win troops for playing on certain modifiers you can also skip waves now in case you need extra cash really fast or you just want to speed things up a little. And you can also now remove obstacles, giving you more room to build and more room for your troops to shoot. So if you want to be up to date on everything about the game, join our Discord server. We've been posting leaks about everything in this video for a while now, and we're planning on having some open testing stuff soon as well. I'm also planning on live streaming some game development as well, either on YouTube or Twitch. I still haven't figured out which. I'll be talking more about that on Discord, and I'll probably be, you know, pinging people when I start live streaming, so if you want to watch those, you should, you should join the Discord. Anyways, without further ado, let's begin. So let's talk about the music system you just saw. Every instrument can be played individually, and you can pair up with other people to make a full song. So you could just play the washboard if you'd like, but it's, it's not really that good on its own. One person could play the piano, and the other could play guitar, or one could play the banjo, or you could do anything, really. Playing an instrument doesn't mean you're actually playing, you're just sitting down and the game plays an audio for you. So functionally, every instrument is playing its own audio. The animations will actually react to audio as well, so when you're not playing, there's no sound, the animation stops. It's not the most amazing, it definitely has false positives, but it's better than nothing. There's a bunch of songs that it cycles through, it even plays Jingle Bells when it's December, and they're all, they're all, they're all a bop, honestly. It's, it's, it's really good. Next up we have some new visuals. So we improved a bunch of the VFX and particles on a lot of things, and there's new stuff as well. Buying, upgrading, and selling will now make particles come out of the troop, and there's even a special purple upgrade for when you get to level 6. Gun particles have also been approved a bunch as well. And one of the coolest new visual things is highlights. Highlights are a new Roblox feature which allows you to highlight objects, and it's, it's not like those crappy UGC hats that have like borders, but you can like see through the border and it's dog shit, but actual highlights. Like in a real game engine where you could give something a highlight and it doesn't just change the mesh, it's actually visually good looking. Every troop you place down will be highlighted in blue so you can tell which ones are yours easily. The range is also highlighted and it's always on top, so if your range is going through a bunch of parts, you can see easily where the range is. Other people's troops are highlighted in black for some visuals. And we wanted to try out a Borderlands kind of style for the game, where everything has a black highlight outline around it, and it kind of looks nice on the Bitter Badlands map. You can see everything's got a little bit of a black outline, and it looks nice. I really like highlights, and I think they're great, but one of the problems is that they have a laughable limit of 31 highlights. So basically, once you place down too many troops, the highlights just stop working. I've tried looking into workarounds for this, but... Nothing gives me the customizability I need, because I need to do a lot of things, like, to the troops. Like, they need to be different colors based on whose troop it is, 
it needs to change the range. It needs to go always on top with the range, and I can't do that with only one highlight. So I'm really hoping this limit is increased or just removed. So next we have narration. Lots of tower defense games have something like a narrator or just some tips that give you info between rounds. Things like, you know, upcoming enemies or little trivia or things like that. So would it make sense to add it to our game as well, you know? Now, this is pretty easy. I mean, so easy that, bam, it's done. But I wanted it to be a bit cooler, so what if it was voice acted? Now, we could voice act every line, but it'd be annoying and I'm lazy, so I thought of a cooler solution. Animal Crossing. Random, I know. Let me explain. So in Animal Crossing, you live in a town filled with animals, but there's no voice acting in Animal Crossing. Everybody just talks to you with these little gibberish noises, which is actually called animalese. And without paying attention, it just sounds like gibberish. But if you listen closely, you can actually hear that they're speaking the words. Now, I don't know how it actually works functionally in Animal Crossing, but for my understanding, every letter character has a sound related to it. And every time uh, one of the letters appears, that sound is played. So there'd be one for every letter in the alphabet, and maybe some for numbers or something like that as well. And I wanted to try this out, because I thought it'd be cool, you know? So I, uh, I opened up Audacity, and I made a noise for every letter in the alphabet. Then I added everything into Studio, and made it so that every time a character is typed, it plays that sound. And here's the result. <laughs> Yes, I made it say the cock and ball torture thing, um, but that's not, that's not the point. It's it's not perfect, but you can definitely tell what it's saying in some cases just by listening. Like if you go back, close your eyes, and and just listen, you might be able to hear some of the words. I could definitely make it more advanced. Like, for example, when it says the, it just does the each sound for the letter. It goes t, h, e, so it's t. It, it, like, it doesn't sound like duh, it sounds like te, but I could make it so it, like, a T and an H makes a th sound, but, like, it's a little too, too much work. Like I said earlier, I'm lazy, that's why I made this. I think this gives the game a little bit more charm, and it's a bit better than just playing, like, a single sound, like Undertale, which is like, <coughs> like, it, it's, it's more, it's interesting. And what makes this even cooler is that we're gonna be having multiple characters who will narrate to you so you can make different voices. Also, for those who think that this is dumb, there'll probably be a setting to mute it, so don't worry. So next up is the inventory. The inventory allows you to equip and unequip, upgrade, and do a bunch more with your troops, and it's an essential part of the game. Now, it's not the most exciting thing, so I'm not gonna spend too long on the inventory. Here it is finished. You can see, you can select your troops, you can equip and unequip them, and all that. You can also see the star rating, this is how rare the troop is, and it affects how the troop is upgraded. Five-star troops will get a sixth level in the game, making them a bit more unique and powerful. That's the purple upgrade we talked about earlier. Troops also have classes, either attack, support, or specialist. These tell you how the troops function, so attackers focusing on damage, supports will help out other troops, or whatever, and special troops have kind of different functions, like Mason, how he builds on the track. So now we have a way to manage our troops, but we need a way to get them as well. So, this is where recruitment comes in. Recruiting is like a gotcha. I know, definitely a few of you just lost interest thinking of Genshin Impact. You open a vault, and it'll give you random troops, and it'll also award you a random amount of cards for that troop. Kind of like Clash Royale. Yes, we stole that. These cards are used to upgrade troops, which will permanently increase their base stats. And I also made this cool little cutscene while you're opening. So I kind of already did a lot of this as well. You can see here, I got Sunny, and then... Here's an Amelia, and now you can see that the cards actually get added. The count of cards is animated, so you can see that little bar go up, and it also goes green once you have enough cards to upgrade. Now in the inventory, we load the cards up, and you can see the upgrade button will also react to if you have enough cards or not. Then we can upgrade our troop. It subtracts the amount of cards we used, takes the money away, and it increases the level of the troop. Our stats will get affected as well. So you see the stats increased in the UI, um, but there is a problem. So the entire game was built without the upgrade system being first, so none of the upgrades actually work in-game. So I have to go through every point in every script where I mention any single stat and change it. 
Every single time I reference a stat, I have to change it. And there's a, there's a lot of that. This was like 30 minutes of just copying and pasting and sometimes changing like a word or two. Very boring. But now it works. All the upgrades work and will continue to work in the future with new things. Then I just kind of made the visuals on the gacha a little bit better. Uh, and you can also skip the beginning cutscene, which is kind of nice because it was long. Alright, so now we need to improve the matchmaking system. What we have is good, but we need to add more stuff. So first off is settings, letting you edit the amount of players you want, if you want a private game, and you can set a password as well. And a level lock where you can set the minimum level you want. Next up is modifiers. So now you can see that it'll show the rewards. This changes a ton in the rest of this recording, so I'm not going to explain every time this UI changes, but it's going to change a bunch. So now let's get the modifiers actually working. First up is double boss HP, which just doubles the HP of all bosses. Then we have half cash, which halves all the cash you gain. Next is time crunch, which removes the 10 seconds in between waves to give you less time to place an upgrade. Then in unbeatable, we start to get quirky. 1 HP, everything costs 20% more, and we actually start on wave 3. Then we have pain, which is the dami mommy of the modifiers. I don't know why I said that. So pain has 1 HP. Everything costs 10% more, we can't get any cash from towers like Sunny, and selling is disabled. Next up I added wave skipping. Everyone either votes yes or no, and once everyone's voted, or after 20 seconds, it makes a decision. And if the wave ends before a decision is made, then nothing will happen. Then I improved a bit more on the gacha. You can see we can buy vaults now. We can buy either 1, 5, 10, or max, and it'll tell us how much it costs. You also need to actually own a vault before you can open it, and you lose it when you open it now. Now I added level locking to stuff, so all the modifiers can be level locked. I'm level 1, so now everything's locked and I can only play on standard mode. So now we're going to actually give rewards for when you win a game. So each modifier has a first time reward and a normal reward. Beating that modifier for the first time gives you the first time rewards, and every time after you win with that modifier, you only get the normal rewards. But if you lose, you only get 30% of the normal rewards. So first time rewards work based on whether if you've beaten the modifier on that map, on that game mode, or campaign. So beating standard in New America on Gorilla Grounds gives you the first time rewards, and then beating standard in Endless mode on Gorilla Grounds also gives you the first time rewards. So basically, you'll be getting first time rewards often. It's not like you play that map, that modifier once and then never again. Rewards are also based on what map you play. Playing easy maps only gives you times one rewards, uh, while playing expert maps will give you times four rewards. So harder maps are definitely worth the extra difficulty. Here I just get some coins and XP, and then when I return to the lobby, you can see I've actually leveled up. And here is the final version of the modifiers page. You can see rewards, uh, and since I haven't beaten anything but standard, all the other modifiers show first-time rewards. So the ending UI will now also show the troop you got. Basically, it's like the gotcha. Uh, here I just got 30 masons, which is definitely not how much you'll actually get, but I got 30 masons. Now it's time for the final new lobby feature, achievements. This is an extra way of getting rewards. You can get coins, gems, XP, vaults, and even troops. And in the future, you might be able to get skins and other rewards, which we haven't added yet. So to start off with, we have six achievements. We have an achievement for generating cash in a single wave, collecting troops, beating pain on different maps, killing Gernader, uh, there's just a basic get achievements achievement, and one for killing enemies. We're also going to add more achievements over time. So here I just claimed the achievement for killing enemies. You can see I got the rewards, which was 10 gems and some XP but it also completed the achievement for completing achievements, so I can claim that and get even more rewards. And in the level bar, you can see I gained some XP and, uh... That's not supposed to happen. So every time you complete an achievement, it moves on to the next tier. Higher tiers require more work, but give better rewards. And finally, we have map interactions, which includes removing obstacles and even changing parts of the map. So obstacle removing is pretty easy. It just costs some cash, and once you buy it, it gets destroyed. It no longer blocks bullets, and you can just place troops where it was now. But now we have something interesting, which is events. These will actually change the way the map itself works. So on this map, troops just go straight to the end. It's very short and, and very dangerous. But if we activate the event, 
the path extends, going through this whole loopy thingy, which is a lot longer and safer. So this costs money to, you know, activate, and it's only temporary, so you don't want to use it every wave, because it only lasts for a single wave, and it has a 60 second cooldown, so you can't spam it. There's also special boss paths now, which only spawn bosses. On this map, bosses will start in this little area and go to the end, which is really short, but then if we extend the path, you can see that he'll also extend his path with some loops. So, when I buy the event, you can see enemies are going through the long path, uh, but once the next wave starts, you can see now that the enemies are just going straight to the end. This feature is only going to be a thing on more difficult maps, and we'll probably also have different types of events, like changing other things, not just the track. This one is specifically an expert map, which is the hardest of the maps, and you can tell it's going to be the hardest because there is so many obstacles, it is so hard to play this map. Literally the only time I can beat this map is when I cheat. So now the game is in a much better state, and progress is going well. And you guys are in for a real treat with this next one, a whole ton of new stuff. Shameless plug again, join the Discord server. We're probably gonna have some open tests soon so everyone can play for a bit. Um, we actually did open up the game for that band scene in the beginning where uh, you saw a bunch of people dancing. Also, like I said, I'll probably be streaming on YouTube or Twitch doing some game development where you guys can come in and just talk and hang out and check out the game. Um, and I'll be announcing like when I live stream on Discord, so if you want to, you know, know when that's happening, then you should join the Discord. So that's all. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.